All right. Okay, week three of the 12 weeks to wellness. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you guys are doing good or not. I do see some people in the office and they come and they get their, their fat burner injection or their semaglutide. Um, they've been walking and they've been eating uh, a natural carb program and minimizing any processed carbs. And for those who are losing more than 30 pounds, they're, they're eating keto-like and eating their lean protein along with their vegetables, fibrous vegetables without the starch. So today I wanted to go over the different types of diets and then let you guys know why I chose the natural carb nutrition program as a way of life. Um, just staying away from all the processed foods um, that are out there that are basically devitalized, genetic mod genetically modified, and creating um, havoc in our bodies, causing the metabolic syndrome, which is a part of the four things that's responsible for coming on, this Emily, <clears throat> responsible for obesity, overweight, high blood pressure, and cancer. So I wanted to open up the floor first, just to see if we can answer any question. And um, I'm available. Um, if you guys are having any challenges, this would be a time to bring it up before I get into my coaching uh, and educational session today. <clears throat> you can type the questions if you choose, or you can unmute and ask the question. I'll give you a minute to get your thoughts together. So you guys have no questions on this program. I went through the book last week. I told you what you needed to do. Pick your, pick your food. Um, you know, the, none of the starchy carbs if you're doing the keto like, but you can have starchy carbs, which includes potatoes, carrots. <laughs> Um, those are starches and corn, that's a starch. Beans, that's a starch. So if you're trying to be strict, you're not doing any beans with starches. And that's the natural carb. And you should still restrict them no more than two servings. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Okay, I gave you a minute. If you have questions during the presentation, please type them. I will see them and I will respond. But you guys are, some of you guys are shy, I guess. Uh, no reason to be shy. I left my fangs at home. I want to see if they can come shoot next to it. I just want to get you to read it. Mm -hmm. hey, Gwen and Sharon uh, are not muted, so if we can mute them so I can start, just press the mute button. Gwen, no, good, wonderful. Okay, I am going to share my slides with you guys so you could see what I'm gonna talk about. And basically I'm gonna talk about the four different big diets that are out there and tell you what, which one I recommend. And it's, it's pretty similar to the natural carb diet if, if it's not the same thing. Um, you just, you know, basically just don't eat processed carbs and you won't gain the weight. Don't eat sugar, uh, you won't gain the weight, so. That is what it's about. It's about longevity. Sugar feeds cancer. 
and it causes you, us to store fat. Okay, all right. So I call this the natural nutrition, similar to the natural carb, right? Where we're not eating processed carbs, white flour products, we're staying away from that for obvious reasons, right? So here's a bigger screen. So I wanted to talk to you guys about the state of our nutrition and disease. And many of us are overweight, not because of our own fault. You know, you can have some genetic component to it, but I'm here to let you know that it's because of the fast food and the processed foods and the GMO foods that are out there and people who aren't educated enough to understand that these foods not only stimulate your appetite, but they make you want to eat more. Um, and you know, with salt and sugar in it and raising your blood pressure, causing you to have excess body fat, which then leads to diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer. So we, we have to be the stewards over our own body. Right? That is our role. We have to protect ourselves. We have to give our body fuel, good fuel, good nutrition. So I'm going to, these are the four diets that people talk about a lot. They talk about the paleo diet, the ketogenic diet, the vegan diet, and the Mediterranean diet. Uh, I'm going to show you what are natural carbs, or why fruits and vegetables are loaded with antioxidants and nutrients and fuel for the body and uh, talk a little bit about processed carbohydrates, especially ones that's from bleach flour, and what are the good meats, uh, what are, which ones are you should stay away from, uh, your beverages, obviously water, 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 and what's what sweetener you should be eating. Coffee and tea are fine. Uh, it's what you're putting in them that can make them bad. All right, so I'm gonna actually ask this question of you guys and somebody who knows, you can turn on your mic and tell me, what is the nation's number one killer? Is it strokes? Is it chronic lung disease? Is it diabetes? Is it lung cancer, breast cancer, or heart disease, cardiovascular? Anybody know? I think it's heart disease, cardiovascular. Numero uno, you got that right. Ischemic heart disease is the nation's number one killer, and it's been that way. Now, <clears throat> through the pandemic, COVID did surpass heart disease, but you know that's an infectious process that had an impact not on your lifestyle so much. It's just a, a germ that was somehow was floated in the environment, and a lot of people died over the last two years um, from COVID. But from a chronic disease perspective, something that we can control in our lifestyle, heart disease, then strokes, then lung disease, uh, infections in the lungs, Alzheimer's, um, and lung cancer from smoking. Diabetes attributes by itself, it, it attributes to heart disease and stroke, but it definitely by itself is a, is a major cause of death. So these are the top 10 global causes of death as of 2016. And I can tell you that most of these are within our lifestyle that we can control. So now let's look at our, the rates of obesity, which is the, how much, if you're over 30 pounds or your BMI is greater than 30 um, for a person that's 5'4". 1990, this light blue, 10 to 14 percent. Let's just say, for simplicity's sake, it was about 14 percent of the population. Ten years later, we go up to almost 19 to 20 percent. You see all these purple areas, and then you had these these uh, this area here in the south, the southern bell down here, where you see that was up to 20. 4%, right? In 2010, we now have oranges and red. 
So once again, you see, this is Georgia, Florida. Um, the, you have Alabama and um, you have Mississippi. All this area here, we're talking about 30% of, of this. So three out of 10 people will be obese. And then another three to four out of 10 people will be overweight. So we have, um, we have a, a national pandemic of obesity every 10 years. In 2020, these numbers are more alarming. You see 35 and 40% across the board. So are we going to blame ourselves for this? Now, all of a sudden, we just decided to eat too many calories, or is the food supply different? You know, this is... This is a 40-year a, a gap here. But you see that more and more people, as, as time goes on, are being classified as overweight or obese. In 2018, uh, what I told you before in 2020, uh, you can see that Georgia and Alabama, Alabama is one of those that leads in the nation, Louisiana, uh, Kentucky, Purple. This is over 40% of the population that has obesity. And that's not even, this is just looking at the obesity. It's not even looking at the overweight. Because the latest figure shows that seven out of 10 people that you will see on the street, seven out of 10 will either be overweight or obese. So normal weight people are the minority. So we, we kind of got used to the fact that everybody's going to carry around an extra 10, 20, 30 pounds. And if they're over 30 pounds, then they'd be classified as obese. Hope I got your attention. So what happened? Because the obesity epidemic didn't start until 1970. And I, I want you guys to know this. The, a bunch of nutritionists, they got together with doctors and they said, listen, we need to create a food guide pyramid so that we can make these recommendations and tell people this is what they need to eat to be healthy. So what, do you, what, did, what did they do? They created this pyramid. And if you look down at the bottom here, the, the bottom foods are all carbs. There's white bread, there's brown bread, there's cereals, there's all the stuff down here, rice and alternatives. And you have a significant, they're recommending five to seven servings. Fruits and vegetables, they just recommended two servings each. And then the meat, they recommended three servings. And then oil, chastity. Can you please mute your, your phone, please? Thank you. All right, so you can see it's a pyramid, right? So they recommend less oils and more starch. This is what started. Before that, they didn't have any food recommendations. But, you know, if you look at the companies that were involved, you know, the Quaker company and the, the Monsanto and all these companies that produce grains and starches, they basically funded these um, these um, research and made these recommendations. And it caused every, to 1980, we had more people, more, in 1970, we only had 3% of the population. 3% of the population was obese or overweight. And now we're at 35 to 40% that are obese and another 30% that are overweight. So knowing that, we need to know that we don't need a lot of carbohydrates, only the natural carb ones, which are vegetables. Starchy vegetables are good for the most part, but if you're trying to lose weight, you know that the starches are gonna break down into, into sugar. So that's why we wanna limit it. When you're in the keto light program, you're, you're not taking it in at all, the starches, but when you're on the natural carb overall, once you've lost the weight, you can add those, those healthy carb carbohydrates back. <clears throat> we all like sweet potatoes. We all like corn. 
And, um, you know, we just have to do the right thing. So here are the four diets. The standard American diet, we call it the SAD diet <coughs> because it, it it's incorporates everything that you see out there. Hamburgers, hot dogs, processed meats, um, <clears throat> deep fried potatoes. Uh, it's a SAD diet, right? Um, you'll have one slice of lettuce on, on your burger and maybe it's a slice of tomato. You know, we're not using good diet, good diets, good vegetables as a major part of our, our food. And it's resulted in the numbers that I showed you early, 40% obesity, 30% overweight. Mediterranean diet, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. It's got a lot of pros. Keto, I recommend this when you're trying to lose weight to get back, but I don't recommend living on this. The vegan diet has a lot of pros, but it also has a lot of cons. <coughs> so you definitely wanna stay. I don't recommend the vegan diet to live on. I think if you have heart disease, it's a good diet to go on because you're not taking in any animal products and the animal products have cholesterol. So that's for temporary time, I don't have a problem with that, but I'll, I'll get into that more. Now you have the paleo diet. The paleo diet, I'll tell you what that is in a minute if, you, if you've never heard of it, but it's good for autoimmune disease because it, you can't do grains when you have autoimmune disease. Lupus, sarcoidosis, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, GI, gut, um, Crohn's disease is autoimmune. Um, ulcerative colitis is autoimmune. So we'll tell you the benefits of the paleo diet for sure. Okay. So let's get into these diets. I want somebody to answer this question. I will read it and just take yourself off mute and then respond. This is a little tricky, but it's uh, if you can get this, I know that you're paying attention. So which of these statements is five statements? The pure vegan diet consists of fruits, vegetables, grain, and plant-based oil, pure vegan. The paleo diet, which you guys know, or you may not know, it consists of grains, meat, fish, fruits and veggies, or the ketogenic diet consists of starchy veggies and lean protein. The standard American diet um, doesn't allow GMO foods and high fructose corn syrup. And then the Mediterranean diet liberates, I mean, it's telling you, you can have sweets, wine, and olive oil to your heart's content. So who's, who's going to tell me which one of these is true? Let me tell you this, there's only one that's true. Everything else is false. So pick the one true answer. It's A. Who's that? Emily. Emily. Are you gonna answer all the questions, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> I'm eager. I won't, I'll leave it for somebody else next time. <laughs> uh, I, I want somebody else to, to confirm that. Who else is gonna to respond to this question? I agree that it's A. This is Candace. Hi, Candace. Yeah. Hi. That is um, correct. Emily, you're right again. <laughs> so let me just debunk this. So the reason B is wrong is because you cannot have grains, no corn, no beans, you can't have any grains when you're eating the paleo diet, but you can have meat, fish, fruits, and veggies, but no grains. This is a diet that's been touted to be the best diet if you have autoimmune disease, and I told you what those were. Now, <clears throat> the ketogenic diet consists of starchy veggies. That's wrong. What type of veggies do we can we eat on the ketogenic Emily. <laughs> no, it's green starchy, leafy, green, green leafy, leafy vegetables. <laughs> I was going to say non-starchy. 
No, <laughs> no, no, right? no, well, the term is fibrous. Remember fibrous. That, that fibrous. You can have oh, fibrous. Yeah. yeah. The starchy ones are remember corn, sweet potatoes, all those things that look like cake. <laughs> <laughs> It's not fibrous, you know. Um, so any of the the roots, you know, in 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 Jamaica we eat a lot of yams, um, white yam, yellow yam, um, you know, things we call it cocoa, a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of roots, but when you're trying, all of them break down into sugar. So when you're on a keto-like program, you don't want to eat starchy veggies, but you can in the natural carb program, which is more similar to the Mediterranean diet, which is the way I eat. <clears throat> okay, now the standard American diet voids GMO foods. No, they don't void anything. Everything in there is GMO. GMO potatoes, GMO corn, GMO everything. So it doesn't void it. And high fructose corn syrup is in everything. You know, all those... Um, Fruits, they put sweet high fructose corn syrup and all the baked goods, they have that in there. And this is all contributing to our unhealthy um, habitus, which we know, you know, that obesity causes a lot of things, increases the risk for cancer and all of that. By the way, I did a show, a radio show on Sunday and it's taped, there's a YouTube link that I'm gonna ask Stephanie to send out to you guys. It's all about obesity. I was, you know, it was a question and answer session. And I talked about this program, the 12 weeks to wellness program and how people can reverse those symptoms. Um, Bonita, please talk. It was amazing. You liked it? Oh my God, it was amazing. Okay. Like, I, I, I can't regurgitate it right now, but I was proud to know you. And to be on your program. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll send that out, Steph, and get, get it to so everyone can, can see it. Did, you didn't send it out yet, right, Stephanie? Are you there? I'm sorry, I just got back to my desk. What was it? The, um, the radio show um, YouTube link. No, I'm waiting on Lauren to finish. Well, he finished the second half. Okay. Yeah. So I'll send it out today. Okay. Great. Okay, guys. So yeah. So the first, the one answer is that the pure uh, vegan diet. Oh, the last one with the Mediterranean diet, you cannot liberate means you can eat as much as you want. And that's not true. You can't eat up all the sweets in the world, the, all the wine and drink all the wine, or all the olive oil. Uh, olive oil is, is great for you. Um, but the sweets aren't. And that's one of the, the things when people are doing a Mediterranean diet, they tend to figure, okay, I can have a little sweets. So they overdo the sweets. So, but the Mediterranean diet by far is the best diet to, to live on. All right, another question. What percent of weight loss is basically diet is what you eat versus exercise versus meditation or whatever? What percent? 50%, 25%, 85%, 75%, or 90%. Who's going to oh get this? God, I can't raise. 85%. I agree. Okay. Um, anybody else? I don't think we did one. Is he coming back up here? Yeah, he's coming at 1.30. Oh. Yes, I say 85 Dion says 85. Bonita, Benita, you said 85? Yes, but I can't see your face anymore, so. <laughs> what happened to my face? I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put that on. Let me put on mute. You should be able to see my face because I have it on that. Let me see. And are you still doing this while we today? I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. I'm just taping it. Okay. okay, it's going to be available via Zoom. Okay, one more chance for somebody. <clears throat> Roby, maybe you can answer this question. Um, you... I'll say 50%. Okay. 
I'll, I'll say D. I'll say 75%. That's Candace? Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Yep, 75%. So that's a lot when you think of it. Answer is 75%. As a rule of thumb, weight loss is generally 75% and then the other 25% is exercise. So when people tell you that they have gained weight and they say, well, you know, I just, I hurt my knee and I just haven't been able to exercise, right? I hear that all the time. I'm like, well, in the meantime, we're, I mean, were you, what are you eating? You know, because we know that if you were eating clean, you wouldn't have gained the weight, you know, but if you're injured, some people, they, you know, it's stressful. And so when your stress hormone goes up, everybody craves sugar, they crave salt. So they decide they're going to feed their cravings. So there's over 700 weight loss studies that found that people see the biggest short-term results when they eat smart. So this whole program is to teach you guys how to eat. You're going to recognize when you're eating something bad, right? When it's loaded with sugar, you're going to look at your, your um, <clears throat> labels. You're going to know if you're eating something that's genetically modified, right? So diet, crucial, 75%. Could be 85, but it, that, that, that was a good guess. Okay, so what happened later on? I showed you that first food guide pyramid. When the obesity epidemic started from eating all those carbs and, and, then, and then making fat, the culprit, you know, oh no, it's got fat in it or it's got cholesterol in it. You got to minimize those. They came out with the Food Guide Pyramid, 1992. So look at what they did. What was the big difference? They increased the fruit and the vegetables. They're saying you can have at least two fruit and at least three, ser three servings of vegetables. They're saying you can have two to three servings of meat. And you can have, they added cheese and yogurts. And they say the fats again, they said, just eat very little of it because it's bad for you. You know, that the whole ketogenic program have you eating 75% fat. And what do people do when they eat keto? Like they lose weight. This is how bad they had it. They had it completely reversed. And still they increased the servings. If you remember the 1970 pyramid said um, about five, five to seven. Now they have from six to 11, they'll eat more eat more bread, eat more rice, eat more pasta. So you could see from the 1990, the 19, the 2000, 2010, and I showed you um, 2018, that the percent of obesity kept on going up. So this was definitely not the, the best recommendation, right? It didn't halt the obesity epidemic. These are the powers that be, you know, that are telling us uh, to eat this way. And I don't even think at this point they even mentioned that, you notice there was no white bread, right? These, this bread looks like a more whole grainy bread and even the, the spaghetti looks whole grain, but um, they didn't really say that in the writing that they should be whole grainy because it's like I told you last time, it takes a lot more energy to break down something that's whole grain versus bleached. So don't buy anything bleached, guys. That just goes straight to your, straight to your belly. Okay. All right, let's get into ve veganism. Everybody was jumping on the vegan bandwagon there for a while and, you know, um, I was brought up Seventh-day Adventist and half the people around me were vegetarians. And most of them were obese, obese. Meat does not get you fat. Fish does not get you fat. Chicken does not get you fat. 
what you may put on it. You put barbecue sauce on it, you may you know, bread it, you know, you can get some extra calories that way, but eating meat does not make you fat. It doesn't stimulate the insulin levels to store fat. So, <laughs> so you know that. Uh, people always tell me, oh, I'm not eating meat anymore, doc. I'm like, and why? Um, because, you know, I, I want to lose some weight. That's not the thing to take out of your diet if you're trying to lose weight, okay? It's the carbs. So um, there's four different, there's five different kinds of uh, vegetarians. You have lacto. These people don't drink milk. That's, I mean, they will drink milk. You have ovo. These people will eat chicken eggs. Lacto ovo, people who drink milk and eat eggs. And then you have the pescatarians that eat fish with vegetables. And then you have the vegan that has no animal products at all. Nothing, no, no milk, no eggs, no fish, nothing to do with animals. These are your vegans. And then you have flexitarians or people will be, well, sometimes they'll eat meat, sometimes they won't. It, they're flexible depending on what's there, but primarily they're eating uh, a, a vegan lifestyle. So here is the vegan pyramid. You can see down here, it's all good stuff, right? You have all types of vegetables, different colors. You have all types of fruit. They recommended three to four servings per day of that and three to four servings a day of vegetables. And then they get into the whole grains. They were specific, there should be whole grains and say anything about bleach. And then you have all of these things. This is wheat and some millet and all these grains. And then they have the legumes, which are beans, which function, they have a higher protein than, you know, um, this is where vegetarians get their, or vegans get their protein is from beans. And then you have your green leafy vegetables and your good oils, which are avocados, almonds, um, all the other um, nut oils are pretty good for you. So this is what. So why are most vegetarians overweight? That's a question. Why do you think vegetarians are overweight, most of them? Because they're eating a lot of processed imitation meat products that has a lot of sodium and other calories in it. That's one great reason. Anybody else? Along with that, I think it's because they're not getting enough fat. You do need fat to burn fat mm -hmm. in your body. That's another good point. Anybody else? Yeah, the biggest reason is because they're eating too much processed carbs. So if you'd say um, white bread, um, fruit juices, that has sugar. There's no meat. There's no meat there. There's no meat in a donut. There's no meat in a coffee cake. There's no meat in, in regular cake. Um, <clears throat> essentially, and then they don't get enough protein because they're not doing a variety of colors. You know, you see those different colors. Some people tend to eat the same thing. Those processed foods that they put together, you know, I, I think if you're gonna be a vegan, so why do you wanna eat a vegan burger? Like, why do you have to like get a processed piece of soy with loaded with sugar and salt to mimic a burger or to mimic a hot dog or to mimic uh, a sausage. And you're vegan, you should be eating this, what it says there. Why get something processed that they can add a lot of crap and preservatives in for you to eat? Yeah. So that's the main reason why a lot of them are overweight. So here are some of the benefits. If you're eating a true vegan diet without the processed foods, 
you could see that they did a trial that showed that it reduced the incidence of type 2 diabetes. People with fibromyalgia, which is painful areas on the, on the body, you touch it, they're called trigger points, they get this microinflammation. So when they get stay away from processed foods and eat fruits and vegetables as raw as they can get it, because raw is much better. Um, you know, you're steaming a little bit with some coconut oil or olive oil is fine, but you don't want to boil your vegetables until they're soft and then become hard. You boil out all the nutrients in the water and all you're left with is a fiber. Um, and, you know, then you, <laughs> if, if you know, like us, when we're cooking collards, you know, we're putting in some kind of meat um, product in it, you know, some fat back or whatever to make it less healthy. So, but veganism definitely helps with fibromyalgia. It helps. There's a doctor in Harvard who um, had a program where he put everybody on a vegan diet, strict vegan, and he was able to reduce the plaque buildup because there was no animal products at all uh, and only healthy oils um, by 53%. So, yeah. Um, so that's good. And then for um, food uh, for food antigens to reduce the inflammation for patients with rheumatoid arthritis, they also recommend the uh, vegan diet for that. You know, the one drawback, again, I'm telling you, is the fact that people are eating processed carbohydrates and not food as it's intended to eat. Right. Now, what are some of the cautions with eating uh, nutritional, some of the nutritional deficiencies that can develop when you eat just vegan products? Can you get vitamin D, vitamin B12 deficiency, omega-3 fatty acid deficiency? You're not getting complete build-in proteins. Um, and you get poor absorption of minerals, the things that we need like zinc, iron, and iodine. We need these in our bodies to work effectively. So all of these are correct except one. And I want somebody to just make a guess so I can move on. Make a guess which one of these you think is wrong when it comes to a vegan diet. Because four of them are correct. And I'm sure you didn't know that you run the risk of vitamin D deficiency or B12 deficiency when you don't want your only eating plants. But you are. And that's why they do supplementation. If you're not drinking milk, or you, you know, you can get some D's from fish, that's the highest source of vitamin D. But if you're not eating fish either, then you're gonna have to take some supplements of D because you're not getting it from plants. B12, the same thing. Omega-3 fatty acid, biggest source of those are fish. You can get it from flaxseed, you can get it from hemp seed, um, but you don't get the content, the big content, and people not eating those foods every day unless you eat fish. So, anybody to guess? I'm gonna just guess E. Yeah, um, good guess. But okay. you do have poor absorption of minerals because of the fiber in a vegan diet. So, you, so the only thing that's incorrect is that you have you, you don't get the muscle building proteins. You have to eat a variety of vegetables, different colors: the reds, the greens, the the yellows, the purple. All of them them have different antioxidants. They have different amino acids, which is what builds up protein. They used to say you don't get complete building protein and you couldn't be a bodybuilder by being a vegan. But people who study veganism and they know how to mix their vegetables, they can get every single amino acid and not develop um, muscle protein deficiency. So yeah, these are the cautions. D, B12, omega-3, and zinc, iron. So that's the only one that's not true. So 
You need calcium and vitamin D for your bones and your teeth. You can find calcium in, in dark green vegetables uh, or fortified. They have to add it to like tofu, which is a soy-based product. Um, vitamin D can be fortified in um, cow's milk, rice milk, soy milk, cereals, and I, nobody should be eating margarine. That's all um, margarine or trans fat. Don't eat margarines, eat butter, eat real butter, not margarines. Um, B12, you need B12 to make your red blood cells. If you don't have B12, you're gonna be anemic. So that's why there will, uh, most vegans will take a B12 supplement, okay? Because there's, you only get this from animal products. Um, so, but a lot of the things are enriched. And enriched means that they take it and they put it in it, right? So all these are fortified. So they add these so that they don't develop these deficiencies, okay? So God didn't intend us just to eat plants. You know, he wouldn't have had the sheeps and the goats and the cows and all these animal products out there. We're supposed to eat meat from a natural standpoint, okay? So know that. It's how, what you put on the meat or how we raise our meats now with, by shooting them up with hormones and shooting them up with antibiotic. So that's why you have to try to get organic um, stuff because man, again, they, they mess with the food supply, all right? They do. Okay. So um, <clears throat> protein, that's, uh, I'll skip over this slide, but minerals, none of the minerals are absorbed well with um, a vegan diet. Um, and then the sugar consumption and obesity, I mentioned this is why um, obesity in veganism is bad because they eat a lot of sugar, starches, fruit juice, breads, processed foods. Okay. Let's change gears and talk a little bit about the paleo diet. Let me see how much time I have, 15 minutes. I'll run through this, just the highlights. Pa paleo diet is called the caveman diet. And it's called that because we didn't have grains back in, these, in this time. All we had was green things, sprouts that was grown outside, vegetables. And then we would chase our meat down. You know, we would kill, kill the fish, die for fish, use an arrow to get fish, chase the animals down, corner them, hit them over the head. <laughs> so that's the paleo diet. So there's no grains in the paleo diet. We didn't start farming until um, the turn of the century when we started to do a lot of grains, you know, rice and, and beans and corn and all of that. But in this time, they didn't have any of that. So people hypothesize, they say, well, if we go back to eating the caveman diet, um, we could probably stay healthy because grains are inflammatory. Gluten is a grain, right? Wheat, it's inflammatory. Corn is a grain, that's inflammatory. Um, so the biggest allergy things are corn, peanuts, and wheat. Those are the things that really mess with, the, with some system and people don't have the right um, enzymes to break them down. So the paleo diet is aimed to return to a way that we ate when we were early humans. That's the rationale. Understand that. It's a good diet to be on for autoimmune disease because you're not going to be triggering antibodies against yourself when you're not eating grains. The grains are what causes the breakdown of the gut lining, causes leaky gut, and then the body recognizes these things as foreign, create an antibody that then cross react with our tissues, we get thyroiditis, we get gut inflammation, we get Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, sarcoidosis, all that stuff. And it comes from just having a leaky gut and the, the, the immune system saying, hey, this is not right. And it starts to make um, antibodies to self. So it starts eating us, our own self apart. And that's what all these autoimmune diseases are. Okay, 
So here's the paleo. You don't want to eat any grains, right? So no breads, pastas, beans, no sugar and high fructose, no dairy or trans fat, no vegetable oils. Uh, these all come from grains. What you can eat is meat. This is at the top, meat, fish, eggs, fruits, tubers. You can have potatoes, but no grains. Vegetables, healthy oils, nuts and seeds. One second. Okay, so that's the paleo. Benefits of paleo is that because you're not taking in the, the grains, more weight loss, improve sugar tolerance, better blood pressure control, lowers your fats, and better appetite management, the body feels less hungry. So when you don't have whole grains and legumes, that's what does that. And it may be too expensive for some people, but you need to know what the paleo diet is. And this is whole, the whole hypothesis behind how autoimmune disease are formed from eating grains. Right? And you know that most grains in this country is genetically modified, so they have a higher protein content. The gluten is higher. The soybeans are higher. Everything is higher because of what we've done to manipulate the grains that we're eating. Okay? I'll skip that question due to time. Grains are inflammatory, just know that. Take that with you. Grains are inflammatory, the leaky gut. And this is just an example of what I was talking about. So you see how the gut lining, this is the inside of the gut. They take a little part of it and they blow it up and look at it. These are supposed to be sealed. Right? All your defense mechanisms are back here, your lymphocytes, and then when you eat gluten, it triggers this protein that rips apart. Oops, you gotta go back previous. It rips apart the lining. And so all these big food particles go into the systemic circulation. The body recognizes this as foreign because it's not supposed to come across that way. It's supposed to be broken down into amino acids, not big chunks of protein. And then bam, the immune system then starts to release all kinds of stuff and the system gets dysregulated, right? So yeah, this is just using gluten as, a, as an example. So 100 different types of autoimmune disease, 100 different types. I just mentioned some, you know, the celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, diabetes type one is considered autoimmune. The thyroid stuff I mentioned, but in the brain, MS, Guillain-Barre syndrome. In the blood, you have certain leukemias that are autoimmune. In the bones, you know, you have rheumatoid arthritis and polymyalgia, um, rheuma, uh, ankylosing spondylitis. The skin, you have, you know, when people lose the pigmentation, that's called vitiligo. That's an autoimmune disease. When they have psoriasis, a psoriatic arthritis, that's an autoimmune disease. It's the body's immune system that's going against itself. And then obviously from uh, in the lungs with uh, Wegener's. Okay. <clears throat> education for the paleo. This is the diet that you want to get on when you're trying to lose at least 30 pounds. It's, a high, it's considered a high fat diet because of the meats and the oils that you're eating, the eggs. It's considered a high fat diet, but does fat get, get you fat? No, that does not make you fat. <laughs> okay, Bonita. So um, if you're trying to lose weight, but you have an autoimmune disease, should you do the keto diet or the paleo diet? You can do either. The only difference really, you know, cause in the keto, you can't have grains either. You know that mm -hmm. things are inflammatory, but the keto is stricter because you can't eat, you can't do tubers, you can't do potatoes, but in the in the paleo you can. So I would stick with if you're trying to lose weight and you have an autoimmune disease, stick with the ketogenic diet because you're going to get similar benefits by not having the processed carbs by not eating grains. Okay, thanks. Okay. 
Yes, no problem. Okay. Um, so instead of using carbohydrates or energy, you know, you're not taking in the carbs. Now you're just eating protein. Any meats you choose, um, you're eating vegetables and the non starchy vegetables, the greens, the green beans, the broccoli, you know, the fibrous type stuff, the celery, the cucumbers, all that stuff that doesn't have a lot of starch, right? Okay, I need somebody to answer this question. All these foods are acceptable on the ketogenic diet except eggs, nuts, apples, asparagus, and broccoli. Only one of them you cannot eat on the ketogenic diet. Who's gonna answer this? Apples. I guess that's my girl again, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is it. And why not apples? The sugar? It's just loaded with sugar. The sugar, yeah. So it's not. That's why fruits. What fruits can you have on the keto program? Yeah, no berries. 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 But that's it. They are, those are lower glycemic. They don't have a lot of sugar in them. All right. Are grapes okay? No. No. No grapes. There's a, they can be very sweet. You know, they can be very, very sweet. So no, grapes are not apple. So here's a food guide pyramid for the keto program. I have five minutes. Um, nuts and seeds, berries, some non-green vegetables like carrots, um, green vegetables, and a bunch of meat at the bottom. You have your salmon, you can have bacon if you like, eggs. So no bread, no pasta, no sugar, no milk, no corn, no beans because beans are starchy and definitely my favorite rice. And that's even white rice. <laughs> so you gotta cheat, get some brown rice, some whole grain, whole grain rice, okay? If you're gonna have a, uh, a four, uh, four ounces of, of rice, uh, I don't recommend it, but it's not going to be too bad. Um, okay, that's the pyramid for that. And you know, you guys know you're picking those foods in the booklet. But here's the benefits of keto. You get greater weight loss, more, much so, more so than, than the paleo and definitely much more than the sad American diet um, or the vegan diet. Cause you know, we know what, why vegans are overweight. We, we talked about it, they eat too much sugar because sugar is not an animal product, but they, they, they do that and they eat, that's why they gain weight. Um, it's uh, effective in control and seizures. We used to use this in pediatrics when I did peds um, to, you know, put them on a ketogenic diet and lower their seizure threshold. It's best for type two diabetics. You keep the sugar out. You can lower your A1C from from um, fourteen down to six by not putting your sugar in and without insulin. Or if you're on insulin, it's just temporary to get you under better control and then we take you off of it. But this is the diet that people with, gluc with um, sugar out of control, the keto diet. You're not putting the starch in, the body says, okay, let me upregulate those receptors and let me fix the body. People get diabetes from eating too much sugar and gaining too much weight. Oh, one o'clock was it today? Uh. Yeah, Felicia, yeah, you didn't get that message, huh? I saw you. <laughs> but listen, guess what? It's taped. So okay, I'm great. send it out to everybody. You can hang for the last five minutes. So. Okay. So here is the Mediterranean diet, which is very much like my natural carb program. Okay. 
primarily plant-based fruits, vegetables. You can do whole grains, legumes, and nuts. We don't restrict any of that because everything is going to be in moderation. Replacing butter um, with healthy fats such as olive oil and coconut oil. Uh, daily intake of two servings of red wine. I know a lot of people like that. Using herbs and spices instead of salt. Limiting red meat to no more than a few times a month. The, the Mediterranean diet don't push a lot of red meat. It's a lot of poultry and fish. So that's that was the wrong one. You can't do it every daily. We recommend you can do it every now and then. Okay, so all these other things are correct. Okay. Fish and poultry at least twice a week, enjoying meals with family and friends, drinking red wine in moderation is optional, uh, and getting plenty of exercise. That's the thing I love about this, five days a week, you gotta move. And here's this food guide pyramid for that. Daily at the bottom, daily exercise and weight control. Whole grains, plant oils, olive oil, um, sunflower oil, peanut oil, and coconut oil. I don't like canola oil that much. Fruits and vegetables. Um, Dr. Ward is just joining us. She thought it was at two o'clock too, I guess. Vegetables, you got there, then you have your nuts, you have your fish up here, you have your, they recommend dairy, but I don't, not necessarily. If you like it, you can have it, but I don't recommend it. And then you see up at the top sparingly just some red meat every now and then. And then, you know, they even want to appease the people. They even mention some white. That's why my diet doesn't have any of these white stuff. It's similar to it from about here down, my natural carb. But I don't, I'm mean. I don't allow people to have this sparingly. Why? Why eat that sparingly? Don't eat it. It's not good for you. So, you know, people can't limit themselves when you say, oh, you can have a little bit of chocolate air there, then <laughs> they get the whole Hershey bar or the whole box of chocolates. So no, uh, especially when you're trying to lose weight. But if you're normal weight, I mean, you know, we're not going to restrict you, but we all, we know 70%, we talked about it, 70% have this issue. But this is what this diet is about. Benefits, it lowers your more cause mobility, mortality, this was a big study. You know, when you get on these, these, this diet, it really improves your lifespan. Um, and here's my recommendation. It's similar to the Mediterranean diet, two to five small meals per day with an eight hour window, the intermittent fasting, you should live, live that way. No processed foods, just natural foods as God created it. No refined foods, that means you're bleaching it. No sugar drinks or artificial stevia, just use, I mean, artificial sweetener, just use stevia or monk fruit, no antibiotics, hormones, processed meats. Most of the stuff that you see on the shelf, if it doesn't say organic, they have this stuff in it. It's not good for you. It simulates growth and can cause cancer. Restrict alcohol use, one or two, one for female, two for males. No pesticides, herbicides, or GMO foods. So we went through all four diets. Here are my recommendations again. This is very much the natural carb program, but you don't want to do the, the um, if you're on a keto-like program, you certainly don't want to do the, the starchy vegetables, but that's really just the only thing that's different. The natural carb allows you to have those, um, one to two servings per day. But here we are. This is how you get the weight off. And now you know the difference between the paleo diet, the SAD diet, the standard American diet, and the uh, ketogenic diet. And of course, the Mediterranean diet, which is the diet I prefer with even more restriction with the sweets and stuff. Okay. So we are at the end of our meetings today. Any questions before I, well, first of all, just write, tell me, did you guys learn something today? 
you can pop on and say yes or type it in the chat. Um, and what was more, how did this help you to just educate you on food? You know, um, let me know. I like the feedback. Hello. Well, I didn't want to be the only one, the first one to say. <laughs> I didn't want to be the second. I don't want to be the second. <laughs> Let's go and do it, Candace. I'll go first. Um, <laughs> yes, this was very uh, informative and learning what to eat and how to eat and how the different things that you shouldn't eat uh, affect your body and your well being was uh, awesome. It's good info. Right. All right, anybody else? And just to add, I mean, not to sound, you know, repetitive or whatever, but, you know, just to add, just making sure you know which diet is gonna work best for you cool. um, based on what your habits are or your weight goals are mm -hmm. and all of that. So thank you again for taking the time to do this too. Oh yeah, this is my calling. I love to teach. And I try to be an example. All right. Okay, one more comment, then, then I'll close out. Come on. I see it's Shakira Dorsey there. Hi, I, in the chat, I asked, was cauliflower rice okay? Oh, yes. Cauliflower is a fibrous thing. You don't, you don't, you just, you, you can have it, but I don't want you to have a whole plateful. When you're doing any type of <clears throat> starch like, even though you know cauliflower has some starch, but it's not a lot, just do four ounces. That would be your portion, four ounces. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Dion Argyle, Ergo. <laughs> That's me. Yes, Ergo. Ergo. Gotcha. I'm um, sorry. Right. I'd asked about I'd asked about millet. If millet was okay. No, it's not. Millet is um, is close to, to wheat. It's not okay when you're on the ketogenic diet. If you want to eat it and you're doing the natural carb program, you can do four ounces of it. But guys, you're going to lose more weight when you stick to the keto like if you have more than 30 pounds to lose. Okay. So if you don't, then yeah, you can have four ounces of those. <clears throat> And I, I suggest that you guys do a, you know, if you if you haven't come into the office, make sure you have your body fat done and know it. We're going to measure body fat. We're not measuring weight so much because fat tissue is the bad tissue that creates inflammation. So that's important. Building muscle is not a bad thing. Losing fat is the most important thing around the organs and and in the subcutaneous space. I have a question. I have a, a quick question. Hopefully it's great. But when you have a lot of belly fat, you call my my, my belly, uh, I can't do a jelly belly when you examine me, but oh, yeah, we Lord. have a lot of lot Don't of tell people I said that. <laughs> no. It's okay. It's, I, will, I mean, you know, like, you, you're we got a warm relationship or whatever it's been going to you so long you know i'll, I'll take yes. it. It, wasn't, it, right. it wasn't uh <laughs> well you're publicizing it so jelly. obviously it's okay <laughs> <laughs> it was okay because it is a jelly belly so anyway but when you're losing weight it comes from everywhere from your face your legs and places like that uh weight but then when does it ever just get the belly uh all together <laughs> I know, right? I wish we could yeah. just direct it, but we there's just no way to direct it. Don't. What I would tell you to do is to um, do cardio because it will burn the fat. On oh, the, okay. And okay. doing some um, leg raises uh, to increase the muscle underneath the fat, and eventually it will go away. Oh, okay. Cool. It's a hard fat to lose, though. It's the belly fat. But for men, it's their love handles. It stays around for, you know, it's like the last thing to leave, to go. Okay. All right. And he didn't call me. He didn't say that about me. <laughs> <laughs> People who know me, they know that I have sometimes no filter when I'm in the room with them one-on-one. -on -one. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I'll talk to I you. I had next. a question. I have a question. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's kind of uh, my question basically is maybe like the opposite of what she's saying. So if you are a person who is solid as far as weight is concerned, not really flabby. Um, what is the expectation as far as losing weight if that is your body build? Should you have any? Because I feel like, or yeah, I've seen please. people who... Hmm? Yeah, that's why I tell people to get a body composition test. You can call right. and we, It's free in the program. We do it for free. We have people... I, did, I, I came in and did one. Okay, so what... What I want you to do, you don't have to say it here. Just look and see what your body fat is, how much fat mm -hmm. it says there. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're going to lose because you can have muscle over the fat and then your fat is more um, visceral. So okay. you know, being people though, they're your big bone. Nobody's big bones, really. <laughs> bones you know, we just have stuff on top of it, you know? So you, right. may, you may have a higher percent muscle, but you still right. have some fat there that you'd have to lose. And we'd focus on that. And this program is geared to lose the fat. All right. Thanks for the okay. question. All right, guys, it's 2.10. I am not going to leave you guys here because I do have patients to see. And um, I totally enjoy um, meeting you guys and seeing you guys. And, and you know, this will go out to the rest, the other 35 people who are on the program who don't have this time to spare. So I'll see you guys next week. Take care. God bless. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.